Eeny, meeny, miny, mo, catch a tiger by the toe. If he hollers, let him go. Eeny, meeny, miny, mo. I'm Jutta Tobranus, and I've come to wonder whether we have a chance to reorganize our future. David Kelly says that the future of design is human-centered. Most experts agree. That leaves the question, which human? An inevitable human condition is diversity. There's no typical human. Even clones and identical twins are not the same. We differ from one to the next, but also from one moment to the next, from one context to the next. But diversity and difference become overwhelming, and we develop strategies to deal with this diversity. We try to make things simpler, less complex, less chaotic. Another part of the human condition is that we try to find commonality and connections. We form groups, informal and formal, with implicit and explicit criteria. We organize, we create categories, we filter, we label. At our most insecure and overwhelmed, we divide in two, we create binaries. Male, female, disabled, normal, left, right, us, them. This all results in issues of who belongs and who is excluded. Membership in groups can be self-assigned, may be imposed, may even be policed. Groups are used to assert or assign privileges and powers. We use groups to judge. Values get assigned to groups. Often characteristics that have nothing to do with the original founding properties of groups are generalized to all individuals in the group. Sometimes people who are in an imposed group take ownership of the group and reform the classifications and values from within. Occasionally, someone has the audacity to break out of the category we have put her in, but to preserve our category, we may dismiss her as an anomaly. Some groups are more fluid, while others are more fixed. We not only form groups, but groups of groups, and groups of groups of groups. Membership in one group can grant us membership in other groups. But despite all this, we are diverse, we are complex, we are chaotic. Individually, we're different over time in different contexts and different roles in different groups. We need to assert our uniqueness. We need to form and refine our identity. We struggle with the identity imposed on us. Generally, people do not fit easily into assigned categories, and yet we persist in assigning them. And then, Something new comes along and shakes up our groups, our categories, and our rules, and we need to adjust, rebuild, and rethink. Something like networks and digital stuff. This new digital and connected world puts into question how we group things and challenges our excuses for leaving people out. The digital changes our view of time, space, and distance, and by extension our view of design, what is possible and what things cost. Digital things are plastic, mutable, malleable, and adaptable. Before, not everyone could fit. Allowing someone in meant someone else was left out. In the digital, room is very stretchy. Before, what we created could not fit everyone, so we made it fit the largest group. We made it for the group called average or typical. This left out everyone not average or typical. In the digital reality, the things we make can reconfigure, adapt, and take a form that is best for each individual. In the solid world, each copy cost almost the same as the original. Consumption actually consumed. In the digital world, we can copy almost without cost. Consumption no longer consumes. Before, it took a great deal of time and effort to deliver things, especially to people far away. Now it is as easy to deliver things around the world as it is to deliver things next door. Before, if we didn't place things in a fixed spot, we would have a hard time finding them again. Now we can place them anywhere on the network and retrieve them from anywhere on the network. Before, we needed to label things unambiguously and simply so we could recognize them and know what to do with them. Now we can see a description of each person or thing that is useful and relevant to our purpose. And by the way, 
We have learned that inclusion and equality are good for all of us. We are all healthier, wealthier, and wiser when our society is inclusive and equal. We've also discovered that diverse groups are more innovative and creative and better at planning and predicting. We've experimented with new organization like most popular, to be ignored, friend, not friend, but we can do better. We can afford to be generous in our design. We have fewer excuses to exclude. We can be true to our diversity. Perhaps now we can find a way to make room for us all.